So uh, I, I was saying it's, it's going to be tough. Like this isn't something you're going to start with, like take a high school kid and then train them to do it, right? You're going to probably have to find some people who already know what they're doing. Um, so you're going to try to fi hire all these people, and then they're, you're going to set them to have their task to be find bugs in browsers, find bugs in like uh, core services like DNS and HTTP servers, um, and uh, you know core routers, and then uh, you know maybe phones, whatever. And then uh, you're also going to want them looking for bugs in kernels like uh, Tavis and Julian. So uh, these bugs will allow you to elevate privileges, allow you to break out sandboxes, that sort of thing. The next thing you're going to need is people to take those vulnerabilities and turn them into exploits. So it used to be that you know basically the the same person who did that who found bugs could find could write exploits, but now it's getting so hard you pretty much it's it's almost a different skill set. Uh, for example, I'm like way better at finding bugs than writing exploits. Uh, so so these guys are going to be you know be writing exploits for for known vulnerabilities and for for uh, zero days. Uh, it's you know it's, it takes a lot of skill with all the defenses that are put in place by by operating system vendors these days. They're going to be able to have to write it for you know all you know Windows, Linux, Cisco, whatever. Uh, and they're going to have to be able to defeat ASLR DEP, sandboxing, whatever they run into. So it's hard. Um, so so these are those are uh, the guys who are going to be writing the exploits. The next are going to be the guys who are trying to get nodes for the for the botnet, right? In case like you know I personally will try to recommend him not doing that because it's so so yucky, but uh, he might want to do it. So. Uh, for this, I'm gonna, you know, be using the client side exploits that that my exploit writers are writing, and these are, like I already mentioned, these are gonna be for known known vulnerabilities. And then, uh, you know, just do the same thing that the, the stupid criminals do. Oh, and I'm also gonna have, uh, the, yeah, I'm gonna have to have servers that are, you know, serving out these exploits. So I have to maintain those. Uh, and then once I have this like gigantic botnet, I'm gonna have people who are in charge of making sure that it's always up. They're going to test that it works, make sure that it's diverse, that sort of thing. Also, you know, occasionally people are going to like reinstall their system, buy new computers, that sort of thing. So, so this is going to be their job to make sure that that the, the botnet as is, is, you know, continues to be useful. Um, next are going to be the guys who are basically like the pen testers who are going to be getting into these hard targets. So they have to, you know, research networks, uh, you know, be able to use exploits, obviously. Um, uh, you know, figure you know, figure out how to expand within a network, uh, install things, whatever. Um, then these, the remote person are going to be the guys who are sort of physically spread out throughout the world, trying to uh, make sure that we have this redundant communication, trying to get jobs at you know important places, and you know bribing janitors, whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to have to have a bunch of developers who are going to be writing my tools for me. So, like, you know, writing a botnet is, is just software. You can get any developer to do that if you, you know, pay them adequately and put a bag over their head or whatever. Uh, so, um, what else? Uh, we're going to need tools for everybody else. Uh, where some of this stuff is going to be like rootkit, you know, in the kernel. So, we're going to need some kernel developers. Um, and then uh, it's, not, it's important, although I hate to admit it, but like testers are really important. So uh, they're going to have to test our exploits, our, all our tools, make sure everything's functioning, and they're going to buy like every IDS on Earth and, and make sure none of our stuff's detected and you know check that periodically. And then you know if you take a guy like Mark Dowd, he's you know the smartest guy that I've ever met, but still he doesn't know about SCADA or about you know whatever us little very particular niche that that we care about. So we're going to have to have consultants come in and and you know tell us what to do as far as if we want to take down these uh you know very specific things like SCADA systems or something. And then we got to have you know your your system ends to keep things running. Uh that's it. So so these are the different job titles. Um let's see 15 minutes. I think I have some time. So uh next is how much I think these are going to cost. How many people I think I need for each of these. All right. And then for cost like I only talk about Hardware, software, and, pe and people. Like I don't know, like how much. Uh, I'm assuming that North Korea already has like some buildings set up and stuff, and you know they already have like support staff to you know, uh, you know, make sure we have electricity and that sort of stuff. And you know they, they don't. People in North Korea don't really need health insurance in retirement, so that's not an issue. Um, so so this is what I was alluding to earlier. So. You know, you're not going to really, you know, I, in my story, they got me, you know, the, the old-fashioned way, right? They, they, they kidnapped me. So uh, not everyone's going to go for that, right? You're not going to be able to kidnap like a thousand people. So, uh, so you're going to, like, how are you going to get people to, 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 to do this cyber army thing? 
Um, so there, there's a couple ways. First, I like pay them pretty good, right? So pay is always good. But still, no matter how much you pay someone, they might be like really patriotic, or they might be like, well, I'm sort of worried about after the, the cyber attack, like what are you gonna do with me? So, uh, so, so it might be hard to get people to do this, right? So, uh, you know, originally, my, when I talked at NATO, I didn't really talk about this subject. This came up in the question and answer part. Um, so, uh, I was just like, well, I'm just going to pay him a lot. But, but there's other ways you could do it. And, you know, like various movies plots, right? So you just have lots of, hire all the consulting companies, give them one little piece. Hey, I want you to develop this piece of code. It's kind of like a, you know, piece of bot software or whatever. Or I want you to find, you know, I want to buy a zero day exploit from you. Um, whatever. And, and so be, between all that, you get enough tools to, to do the things you want to do. Um, and, and it's better, like, so, so this was something else to point out to me, like, it's like well, uh, you know, by your cyber army, you were hiring up all the best people, right? And like all of a sudden next year at Black Hat, there's like nobody there. So <laughs> people are going to notice there's something going on, right? And you know, I was like, oh, that is, that is true. So uh, that, that, it's better if you can figure out a way to sort of, you know, do it through the consulting uh, route or something. Okay, so, uh, so here's, here's the number of people, what I think it'll cost, I'm gonna go kind of quick. You can check out the slides for details. So uh, vulnerability analysis this is like basically what I consider myself, so someone who finds bugs. So you need like 10 guys that you're gonna like, you know, pay very, very well to find all the bugs. I think it's hard, but I'm biased because that's what I do. Um, and then like 10 just like CS majors, right? Guys who, uh, you know, who just graduated, but they don't necessarily know much. And so $3 million a year for, for these guys. Uh, exploit developers, so these are the guys who are figuring out, so you got, first you got 10 guys who are like, you know, super elite dudes who, are, they know how to get around, they can, they can figure out new ways to get around mitigations. So they're sort of almost like the theoretical guys and, and they're also writing some exploits. Then you've got 40 of these guys who basically know how to write exploits, but they're not like, uh, you know, rocking the world with their research or anything. And then you just got like 20 dudes to kick around too. So seven million bucks for those guys. So these are all US dollars too, like you can probably do it way cheaper in Korea, but. I don't, I don't know what Korean currency is like. So, uh, and then these guys, these are the guys who are basically like the current criminals, right? Uh, the guys who, 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 who get nodes for the, for the botnet. So um, 50, 50, you know, good guys, 10 like little, I always like to have like 10 guys that kick around. So four, four million dollars. Then the, the 200, so this is like the, the, the majority, almost half of my workforce I think are these guys. These are the guys that just try to maintain this like huge, huge botnet, make sure it's still working, test it, that sort of thing. 200 guys who, who have like degrees in computer science and then like 20 other kind of college kids. $12 million. Uh, these are the pen tester guys, 50 of those guys, because there's going to be like a lot of networks they're going to want to get in. Um, and like for comparison, the company I work for is like 12 guys. So this army is like way huger than, than mine. Uh, okay, 10, 10 guys to kick around. These are the guys that are like wandering around the world trying to get jobs and stuff. Um, so I don't actually pay for them because I figure like, you know, it's not really a technical job, right? They, the North Korea probably has people who are already good at this. Um, so these are the developers. So these are the guys writing the code for us, writing the botnets, that sort of thing. Uh, 10 like really skilled guys, 20 just like, you know, straight out of college and then 10, 10 kicker rounder guys. Um, testers and then these are like everyone else. So these are the consultants. So I'm, I'm willing to drop $2 million a year on, on people that tell me how SCADA systems work and how, you know, uh, Wall Street systems work and that sort of thing. Um, and, and again, maybe I'm biased because I'm a consultant. Uh, sysadmins and then managers. Like as much as I hate managers, I end up spending a fortune on them. So uh, $6 million. All okay, right, what kind of equipment do I need? Well, uh, I don't think I need that much equipment really. So a couple computers for people to work on, uh, like, a, a, like a real kick-ass lab with like all equipment, that, like you know, core routers and, and that sort of thing, switches, uh, phones, whatever. And then of course, you know, the, the, the mandatory software you would need. And uh, what about the servers that are going to host our exploits for collecting bots? And we'll just take those over. We don't need to actually buy them. All right. So in all, the, my my cyber army, 600 people. Uh, you know, 45 million in salary. Uh, so it's you know not a bad average salary, and uh, three million in equipment. All right. So so here's the the pie chart. See, I'm truly. This is like my in my slide deck that I would present to the great leader. So. Uh, <laughs> You get, on the left is, is how many people, and on the right is how much it co they cost. So you can see like the biggest pie chunk is the, is the guys who just are maintaining the botnets. And then the, the sort of like super advanced people are the kind of in the top. So on the yellow is the, uh, the like the pen testing type guys, and the, the green are the exploit writers, and in the middle of the little blue pie slice is the, the guys who find bugs. 
I have sysadmins for that. That's, that, that was the sysadmins. I don't know where they are on here. They are, they're red. They're the teeny little sliver next to the, the, the operators. So, yeah, I, you know, they're willing to work 24 hours a day, I'm sure. All right, so then this is, uh, I, I can't just roll this out like immediately. So I have to take some time to get everything rolling and I, and I have a two year plan and this is it. Okay, so what am I going to do? So, and, and I assume like I have like base, I'm not counting the part where it takes to like hire everybody and you know get everyone sitting at their desk and stuff or whatever. But like when we're ready to go, uh, for the first three months we're going to get our remote guys, you know, blowing out the world, starting to set up their equipment, trying to get jobs. More remotely analyst guys start looking for bugs. Uh, the exploit developers start writing and polishing exploits for known vulnerabilities. Um, uh, the developers start writing their, their bot software and their rats. And uh, there's just some basic research done on like who do we, you know, who do we think the hard targets are going to be, uh, you know, what sort of systems they use. It's very basic research at this point. So three months down the drain. And Kim Jong-il is like, okay, we're ready to roll, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we haven't really done anything yet. But trust me, two years we're going to be ready to rock. Okay, next three months. Uh, we, you know, hopefully the bug finder guys will find a couple zero days, uh, some DOS bugs and, you know, like DNS servers or whatever. Um, we start to, the, since there's, the exploit writers start writing some zero day exploits based on those bugs they found, uh, or bot or whatever. Uh, we start to collect botnets, hard targets, you know, we, we, we're rolling out like typical pen testing trying to get trust established and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Robin saging it, so to speak. Okay, next three months. Uh, we start to get into the hard targets with our zero days. Uh, we start to clean up uh, and uh, collect. So we so our botnet at this point is somewhere like you know 500,000 hosts or something, which is by cyber criminal standards like pretty small. Uh, I got all of our remote communications all set up. Or we're still writing some software because remember we can't just have one. We need to have like 10 copies or 10 different versions of every software we use. So after one year's gone by, this is like a huge investment, right? Kim Jong Il has spent fifty million dollars, and he's he's wanting to know what's going on. Uh, well, we're we're sort of in some hard networks. We're not like you know controlling them like totally yet. We got five million hosts, which is like a pretty large botnet by today's standards. Not like you know blow you away, but still it's big. Um, we've got zero days uh, exploits available for most things that we would want. Um, you know, sometimes some of these are going to get patched. We'll have to have new ones, so we have multiple of each. And we're inside, uh, you know, some some critical systems. Maybe we've unairgapped a couple. Okay, six six more months. Uh, by now, like the the hard networks are basically totally owned. Like it's going to be really hard to ever get us out. Uh, our botnet is getting pretty enormous at this point. So 100 million hosts. Uh, we've got lots of zero days, and we we've we've unairgapped a bunch of systems and, and are starting to compromise those. Finally, after two years, we basically, like all the hard targets we thought we would care about, we like totally own them. Maybe we've gotten caught a couple times, but for the most part, we're in good shape. We've got like, this is like, I would love to see if this is possible. 20% of personal computers owned by us. Um, like it's, it sounds like a lot, but if you think about like how many grandmas and stuff are out there, it seems reasonable. Uh, and then uh, of course, and, and then the air gas systems. Okay, so then one day, you know, Kim Jong Il walks in with his his generals or whatever, and he's like, "Okay, Charlie, today's the day that I paid you for. Today's the day we attack, right? Somebody pissed me off. So uh, this is this is the kind of things I can imagine doing. And the bottom line is, if, if given the two years, uh, you know, advance notice, it's uh, you know, it's it's pretty much a done deal at this point. Okay. So <laughs> conclusions. <laughs> But yes. So, so they never stood a chance against me, me and the leader. Uh, although he prefers champagne and I, I like beer. All right. So, so what, what lessons can you draw from this? So like as, as much fun as I had thinking this up, like I went to NATO for God's sakes, right? So it couldn't have been that evil. I, you know, I was hoping that some, some like good would come from it. And uh, there's, not, there's not much you can really do, but there's, there's some stuff you can do. So uh, the idea is that with enough patience and money and time, it's going to be really hard to stop a skilled attacker. This is the typical uh, defender's dilemma. Um, and again, like, you know, the, the, the caveat is I, I, I play offense only, so maybe I'm sort of biased that way. Um, the other thing is, like, I spend all my money on people. I think people are way more important than equipment for this. And uh, taking down the, the whole internet, uh, you know, I don't know about that, but uh, the point is, it, it'll be even harder if you want to take down parts of the internet and not your own, but for me, I don't care as, as a North Korean citizen. Um, 
there's lots of talk about backdooring everything you see in the media. Uh, I don't think North Korea could really easily do that, and, you, and I don't even think it's necessary. So I don't, I don't think that would be part of the plan. Uh, the other thing is that my cyber war plans involve people being around the world and doing things. It's not just 